Jesus, Son of God, we want to honor you this morning. We want to praise you and glorify you. We ask that you be the center of our attention, that we'll eat of the bread, the consecrated bread from heaven, Jesus, and our hearts will be filled with you. Lord, I pray that every heart here will yearn, thirst and hunger for you alone. And they will be filled this morning. Let your word speak, O oh Lord. Open our ears to hear your word. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, good morning, church. We are uh, looking at a sermon titled, That One and a Half Hour on a Sunday. That One and a Half an Hour on a Sunday. A few weeks ago, I was preaching how to read your Bible. Then I was preaching on how to pray. Then we were talking about uh, anger and, 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 and the anger of God and the righteous anger versus sinful anger. And today, I want to talk to you about church. I want to talk about our assembly today, this morning, and why it is important for, we, for us to gather as a church and worship the Lord. So this is that one and a half hour on a Sunday. Now God has given us 24 hours. Some of you might have slept very well. Some of you may not. Yesterday was very muggy. Um, and you said, look, I'm, I'm a bit tired this morning, you may say. But for that one and a half hour on a Sunday, you have allocated, allocated to God and to church and to seek his face. And why that one and a half hour is important. I mean, you can do so many things on a Sunday. You can play sports, you can go to the beach and do whatever. But as a Christian, that one and a half hour is so important. It is ordained by God. So you and I can come together and worship Him. Now our services, our service here lasts for, uh, I think, for one and a half hour. So we gather. And what should be happening for that one and a half hour? Uh, that's something that I want to share with you and explore further. Now when we talk about the Sabbath, we have, of course you have to go to Genesis uh, Genesis 2, uh, the reading just now, and I'm going to quote from Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done or in creation. Now the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, and when the seventh day came, he blessed it because he, he, and made it holy because he rested from all his work. Now, as we know, God is not a human being that you should say, oh, I'm so tired from all this creation, I'm going to get a, take a nap. No, that's not what the writer is saying, oh, I'm so tired, and God is saying, I'm going for a break. No, he doesn't do that. The keeper, he who keeps Israel does not sleep, nor slumber, Psalm 121. So God rested from his work, meaning uh, uh, an author says, or one of the books I've read, he says, God actually created rest to show us we must rest. And how do we rest? God, when he had finished creation, he saw that everything was very good. Then creation looks to this God and says, God, you are worthy because you have created everything. And therefore, all creation worships the one who made everything and who completed creation. So when the author of Hebrews says, God saw that it was very good, God wants humanity to see that he is a good God, amen? That he gives good things, that he creates good things. So in the beginning, God blessed and made it holy, so we, you and I can come together on the day, the Sabbath day, and say to God, we as a people of God, you can do it every day, but Sunday is a day of assembly, where we come together and say, you are a good God. And you are worthy to, for, to, to be worshipped. Then we look at Exodus 20.10. It became a commandment. The seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. It was a commandment. And then they put down everything and said, look, we shouldn't do any work. We just worship the Lord. We 
declare and praise God for, for all that he has done for us, for choosing us and saving us, for redeeming us. And they just went on and on. And the, it was a big worship session. It was a, 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 pl- a time of sacrifice. A time where the families came together and ate as people of God and rejoiced in this wonderful God has given them all, uh, supplied all their needs. Then we come to the New Testament and uh, the, the, the church gathered together. Uh, and and uh, the Bible says when they came together, they sang hymns and they prayed. And again, they worshiped God. The family of God came together. And how did they come? It was through the blood of Jesus that have cleansed them and washed them. They came and looked at the cross of Jesus and they were saved by grace alone through faith in Christ. And they said, This we come together because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross as people of God. And they came with an attitude and a heart of worship to this wonderful and holy God. And of of course, the Bible says in Hebrews, it's a preparation for a heavenly rest, heavenly Sabbath. Because one day all of us are going to go to this great rest. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) This great Sabbath. And you're going to be with Jesus Christ. And this is a practice run. So if you can't worship God for one and a half hour on Sunday, (laughs) it's going to be very difficult for that run on that day. When 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 you spend your eternity with Jesus Christ and worshiping him. So, yeah, Hebrews says that it's God is preparing you for an eternal rest. And this rest has not come. This, this rest in Genesis, this rest in the, in, the, in the Old Testament, this rest in the New Testament will not be completed until that eternal rest which Jesus gives in, with him in the kingdom of God. Amen? And that's the eternal rest we are wait, waiting for. So we are preparing for a great rest, my brothers and sisters. In Christ Jesus. So it did not come from a sense of duty or act of legalism like what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees condemned Jesus and he, they said, Look, Jesus, you know, you, these people are eating uh, uh, food on Sabbath. You know, they're working. Oh, why did you heal on the Sabbath? Why are you doing this on the Sabbath? Why can't you choose six days, other days to heal? Why, why on the Sabbath? And Jesus said, look, this, I am the Lord of Sabbath. Amen? God made Sabbath holy so that I, the God of, Lord of Sabbath, could be, can be worshipped, should be worshipped. Not to make it legalistic. Not to put on all these laws that people are so consumed by these laws that they forget that God is the Lord of Sabbath. The program is running. The things are happening in the church. Everyone is doing everything except worshiping the Lord. Have you been to churches like that? Where things are happening all the time. And there's so many things happening. And you go out of the church thinking, did I worship God? (laughs) Did Did I sense in my heart that this was a time of worship? Or we just went through the motions. And I tell you, I've been to lots and lots and lots of churches. I've lived in two different countries. I've been to various denominations. Because I was searching. I wanted a church that, uh, that would speak to my heart. You know, in the early days when I was uh, not a very matured Christian, so I said, look, let's look for church. Look, go for church. Go for church. When God transformed me, then I realized I can be part of the solution, not the problem. Yeah, Amen. Okay, so I went to a church and said, uh, the first question I asked was, what can I do for this church? That's a question I asked. What can I do for this church? What, how can I minister using my gifts? Rather than saying, what can I have from this church? What I'm going to take away from this church? Yeah, that, that, that's good when you're growing. You, you need something. You need uh, bread and uh, you need God's word to uh, be preached and for you to be filled. But after some time, the question is, what can I offer the church? What can I give to this church? So they made it a legal thing. They made it they so, you know, it was about fulfilling the duty. Or this is what we do. 
That this is what we don't do. And people just come and go through the motion. Never being touched by God's power or spirit. Never having their hearts uh, convicted of sin. Never having t- felt the power of God in their own life, lifting their burdens and setting them free from the bondages of sin. What is the point of a church if it cannot convict you of your sin? It can, if, if it cannot lift your burden through the power of the Spirit, through the Word of God, if it does not pre- preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We remember another, you know, uh, we are just doing a duty and going off. So that's what happened in the Old Testament. They became so um, burdensome to the people. And Jesus quoting Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, the acknowledgement of God rather than burn offerings. Amen? When we worship, we acknowledge God is here. And we want to worship Him. We just don't want to come and do a few songs and just worship. No, we acknowledge God and we are here. You know, you, you hear Sunday songs being put together, the sermon and this and that. But throughout the week, a lot of things are happening. We are praying. Howard is praying. The worship leaders contact me, ask, what's your theme for this day? What are you doing? How, uh, what? They are preparing in prayer. I am in preparing in prayer. I'm thinking, how do I bring this message to the people of God? How can I, do, how can I be uh, God-honoring in preaching this word? So throughout the week, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and reading, thinking, praying to what God wants to bring, uh, wants me to bring for this, for this Sunday. So God is the center. The Bible says Jesus is the Lord of Sabbath. We are here because of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's talk about Christ Church Tingley. Next slide, please. Uh, next one. <laughs> next one. Yeah. What's Christ choosing? How do we worship? Forget everything about everything for this, this one and a half hour. You have come here. Um, there must be a reason why you are here. All right? So you like something, maybe you like the worship, the preaching or prayer, whatever you like. If you are here this morning, but above all, as I've said before, God has brought you here. You are here because Jesus has said to you, I want you to go to Christ Church Tingley today. Amen? You are here. You're, near, just didn't be, you're not here because just you want to turn up because God has called you here this morning. So our church, for that one and a half hour, as we come together, we want to do these things. And we want to do them well. Christ Church Dingley Sunday worship is Christ-centered, God-centered. Everyone say amen? It's God-centered, not any uh, human-centered, but God-centered. Next slide, please. Yeah. Click, click. Yeah. Thank you. On Sunday, we adore God who has given us so much. We praise God through our songs. We worship God through our songs. We desire God. We thirst for God and hunger for God when we come together. We cry to God. Some people cry during worship and prayer, amen, uh, when we receive from God. When we worship, it's about God, it's about Jesus. We are focused. We are focused. We're, our, our church service is about God. Focusing on God. Our worship is about God. It's a God-centered worship. Next slide, please. Our Sunday prayer is Christ-centered. When we do a prayer, whether intercession prayer, intercessory prayer, or any other prayer, we praying for people, it is Christ-centered. We pray in Jesus' name. Next slide, please. We pray to God. We plead with God. We intercede before God. We petition God. We ask from God. We confess our sins to God, and we receive from God. One of the strengths of our church is that confession is baked in through, through, with our communion service. In our, in our communion service, there is a time for confession. There's a time to 
plead. There's a time to intercede. There's a time to ask. There's a time to make a general prayer. Our Sunday prayer is for one and a half hour is Christ-centered. Next one, please. Our Sunday message is Christ-centered. Again, we are not talking social gospel. We are not talking about stories. We are talking about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Nothing saves. No, no one, no, there is no other salvation except in Jesus. So we're Christ-centered. Next slide, please. So we pre-read the Word of God. We preach the Word of God. We are inspired by the Word of God. We remember the Word of God. We are reminded of the promises of God. We share the Word of God with one another. Next slide. And Sunday Fellowship is a work of grace because of what Christ has done to do good for others. Uh, Lord, he read a beautiful verse, and he said, look, you know, um, this, uh, I'm doing this because of the good works prepared for me by the Lord. Amen? So there are good works prepared for you this morning to do for others. Don't hold back. Do it. Give it. And I want to say this to Christ Church Tingley. Uh, we finished the survey. We looked at the risk results. We discussed about it. And one of the praise points that came out of that survey uh, for Christ Church Tingley is that we asked how many of you are volunteering in some kind of capacity in the church. You know, what's our percentage? 84% of our people are volunteering in some ministry. Give yourself a glass. 84%. That's fantastic. That's very high. I mean, it looks like we're not much, and we looked at it and said, oh, maybe 20, 30, no, 84% of you are committed in some kind of ministry. Bless you all. Bless you, people of God. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Now, of course, the hindrances to our Sunday worship. Now, I, I, so I want you to focus on Jesus. That's why I said Christ-centered, God-centered. So when you come one hour, hour forget everything, Look at Jesus. There are hindrances. Sometimes these are the hindrances. And this is a big one. Next slide, please. The pastor. The pastor can be hindrance, isn't it? Uh, you know, there was a survey made, done many years ago, and they said the pastors, uh, many of them got a per narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it, narcissistic personality, it's about them. Oh, look at me. Hey, I'm in the spotlight. <laughs> you know, and they said, look, we, we, the pastors tend to do that. Or if they, if, if they don't start with that personality, they end up with that personality. Narcissistic, focused on me, me, me. That could be, that could be hindrance to God's blessing the church. When the pastor becomes an idol, now, one thing that irks me was this. Uh, sometimes when the pastors preach and you get this big screen with the pastor's face. Have you seen that? Huge screen, the pastor's face. Everyone is looking at the pastor. <gasps> For me, I, 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 I dare not. I dare not. We, we have a big screen, I dare not. Because it is Jesus we are preaching. You know, I, I want you to, every good pastor will say, Come, I will help you, I'll support you, I will teach you the word, but I want to lead you to Jesus. Don't become my, my disciple, become a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's what we want you to do. That's what I want, that's my desire, that you look at Jesus Christ. That I, I walk right, that that I, I'm, I'm your pastor, will show you, will proclaim Jesus Christ, not me. That I shouldn't be the center of the church, but Jesus Christ. So when the pastor became an idol of the church, you're asking for trouble. Because then people take the eyes of Jesus and look at the pastor as the idol that is worthy to be worshipped without them realizing and that is a big hindrance for church growth. Next, people-centered. It's all about our problems. It's all about us. You know, we're consumed by 
by, by our own issues that we cannot worship God on Sunday. When we come to worship God, our mind is racing towards all our troubles and problems. Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your burden upon the Lord. Why you assemble? So you can cast your burden upon the Lord. The Bible also says, pray for one another. Bear one another's burden and pray for one another. So when you come to church, you may have a burden. Yes, it's yours. But two things you can do, people of God. You can cast it upon God. You can ask a brother or sister to, sh uh, to, to share the burden with them so they can pray for you. That your burdens be lightened. Amen. But when we are so consumed by the negativity, it's all about people, it's all about the achievement, then we lose focus of, on Jesus, of Jesus. We don't want to do that in Christ Church TV. We want you to look at Jesus. Not people-centered, but Christ-centered. Next one is a big, big one. Program-centered. <laughs> focus on completing the program. You know, from A to, uh, to, to uh, A, B, C, D, F. Okay, let's, we have done F. Ah, we are satisfied. It's not about what the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst, but it's all about completing the program. It's, this is dangerous. All of us need program. Of course, we have a run sheet and all that, but we must allow this for the Spirit to do what He wants. And He said, Richard, don't do this. I want you to do this. I must listen. Worship Him. Let's sing these few songs again. And the Spirit says, no, I don't want this song. Sing, repeat the same song again. All right. Prayer, okay, let's intercede. But today we are going to do this sort of prayer. We are open to the work of the Spirit. We are not completing a program. It's not a program. For one and a half hour, it's not a program that we need to uh, run through and complete it and feel happy about it. No, it's not. It's about the worship of God. So don't let program consume us. But rather, Jesus Christ, through His Spirit, guide us. However, I'm not saying, next slide please, that we can be too spontaneous. <laughs> no planning, nothing, we just turned up, hey, well, the Spirit will lead us now. No, that's nonsense. Okay, there's no order of confusion, okay? So then that, that, there must be a, uh, the order, as Paul says. So you can't be too spontaneous, okay? We must obey the, the word of God. Uh, neither okay, should we be too, next slide please. Too rigid. You know, this is it. This is it. Oh, the pastor didn't miss that word. Oh, the pastor didn't say that. No, no. We're good. We are good. Did you, did, were you filled this morning? That's a key question, isn't it? Did you worship this morning? Did you feel that you have worshipped God this morning? Did you feel that the, we have received something from the word of God this morning? Did you feel that you have prayed and given something in prayer to others? So you have been prayed for and your burdens be lifted. If you got that, then you have done church well. Praise God. Don't worry about the program. You've got to be too rich. Next one, please. Our church, as a church, we are learning to lean on God at all times. We have a, had a lean year last year. This, uh, every week I'm sharing, sharing this because this is in my heart. We have not had a, a, a conversions in our church. We're going through some lean times as a church. But what do we do during these lean times? What do we do? We go into depression? We, we, we said God has given us, uh, Ichabod, God has left us. No! It's a time to lean on God and pray more and more and more. I was glad uh, Mary uh, said Saturday we just worship, praised and worship. Uh, Wednesday we were praying together and I was there in you know, a Wednesday prayer and we prayed. Every time we, we gather, we pray, we seek God. We want God's blessing upon Christ Church Tingley. We want people to be saved in this church. We want people to come and hear the word of God. We are going through some lean times, but it's not going to be forever. Amen? God will bring us our church. Because we honor him, God will honor us in due time. Amen? God will honor us 
So in these lean times, what we do, we keep on praying. We keep on being faithful to his word. We keep on worshiping and we keep on being faithful to, um, uh, to his word at all times. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's okay. I've gone to, to the last slide. I've got another additional slide. It's not there, but I want to share. All are welcome to Christ Church in England. Amen. Everyone can come. Anyone can come. We want to welcome anyone. We say, come and be part of our church. But we don't welcome all doctrines. Just because we welcome everyone does not mean we are an open-minded church that anything goes. You bring a certain theological perspective, you bring a doctrine which is not scriptural, we will not welcome it. Yeah? Yeah, we, we agree on that. It needs to be scriptural. It needs to stand on the word of God. So we cannot say, yeah, yeah, the world believes this, so it's okay to accept it. No, we can't. We won't. It must be tested by the scripture, as the Bible says. And we must stand on the scripture. So everyone is welcome in Christ Church Tingley, but we don't welcome all kinds of doctrines. I want to be very clear on that. Uh, we, want to be, we want to stand on God's word at all times. So people of God, this is a kind of, I'm, I'm building this up because I want to talk to you about the vision of the church later on uh, during the year. And uh, we are aiming, aiming and praying for God to continue to bless us and prosper us in our way. So I want to thank God for that. So this is Christ Church Dingley. This is, my prayer for Christ Church Dingley is you know Jesus Christ always. That when you come on a Sunday, you you know, when you go out after that one and a half an hour later, he said, I have worshipped God. I've been feeling my spirit. My burden's been lifted. Yes, I'm going. It's not my, all my problems are solved, but I know God is here. And I feel the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we achieve that every Sunday, then truly we have worshipped God, I believe. So praise God for that. I want to um, finish up by, um, by just uh, sharing with you about our, uh, uh, our prayer ministry team. Now, every week we get people writing and asking for prayer from outside. They, they, find, our, uh, find, uh, they find our address on our, on, on our website, and they write and say, do you, do you have a prayer ministry? Can we come to be prayed for? Our prayer ministry team um, together every Thursday to pray, they have said, look, we want to pray until we are ready. And they said, look, we, we want to pray. And they, have, and, and they are doing it very, very well. They are not rushing to pray. They are not saying, oh, there are people waiting, oh, better get started. But they are waiting for God to guide them to a time of prayer and unity, and then they want to start to pray. And I, 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 I personally am, am so thrilled with that they are waiting upon God to guide them in this ministry. Because prayer ministry is not an easy ministry. You get deliverance, you know, demon possessed sometimes who come. Uh, you get people who are you're struggling with bondages. We got this and that. And it's a very difficult ministry, I must say. It's not just easy ministry. There's a lot of fasting and prayer. I know because I've done it. I've, done, I've been in a prayer ministry team for a long time. And it's, sometimes it takes a lot out of you. And they've been waiting and praying. I'm so glad that they're doing it. So one of the, that's being Christ-centered. It's obeying God, being Christ-centered, so then they can minister freely among the people. Now, we, and I've spoken to you about the, 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 con, uh, the life groups. And I always, always say to the people, uh, leaders of the life group, you are mini pastors of your group. Take care of them, disciple them. Be Christ-centered. Be Christ-centered in that. Everything that we do, I have to honor God, be Christ-centered. So people of God, uh, the ministries are starting to shape, to be shaped in, uh, to be shaped um, in a sense, to be Christ-centered, to be slowly be, be shaped that we can always, always point to Jesus and say, Lord, you are the master, you, you are the key, you are the ruler and the, and, and the, and the king of this church. 
And I pray that every ministry that we do, that we, when we gather, we will proclaim Jesus as the center.